This video was intended for all audiences and no real life mothers were hurt in the process. If you find yourself upset about something, please seek help from one of your local professional mental health experts and stop watching this video immediately. But keep it rolling for the ads. Let's move on. Now, the mummy is an interesting boss fight. This is the first boss in Curse of Eros where you are encouraged to attempt in a group. The mummy has a wide spread of mechanics, but it's actually not too complicated in practice. As long as you understand the fight, then beating him will be an absolute non-issue. And this is where I, Daddy Free to Play, the mummy beater comes in. Before we dive into the mechanics of the fight, we must first find the mummy. Starting at a Shadow Dune spawn, head north through a series of aggressive enemies. First, you must brave the Sandstone Golems, then you must cut across a sea of snakes where you will find the Tomb of Shadow Dune. Upon entering the tomb, venture all the way north past the Anubis and hostile elite Anubis. There at the end lies three pathways. The top corridor leads to a dead end, but the paths on either side will lead to individual mummy mosh pits where you can challenge him in them. Now, the mummy himself does not drop many important things, but what matters the most are the red and gold keys. These keys are used to unlock the mummy's chest which hold the true treasure that themselves. There was a mother's joke in there somewhere. From a few run-ins with the mummy, I have collected 21 gold keys and 3 red keys, so let's see what we get from these. Now the red keys unlocks the red chest and you have to be really lucky to get anything good from it. The important red chest loot are gold keys, and keys, and soul jars. As for the gold keys, these unlock the gold chest. What we want from the gold chest are the mummy bandages and mummy soul. The mummy soul and soul jars combine into the collected soul and together with the mummy bandages, these are used to create the strongest warrior set in the game, the ancient. Now aside from the red and gold keys, the mummy also also drops cursed rags for tailoring, gold bars for smithing, ancient tablets for crafting, and ancient reels for fishing. Efficient just like your mama. Now as for your requirements, things are a little bit more interesting. If you are to run mummy solo, I would highly advise you to be fully kitted in turmoil. Yes, this fight does get very challenging and the full turmoil set gives you a nice balance in HP, defense, and sufficient damage to beat the boss before you eventually get overrun. But if you were to challenge the mummy in a team, you could afford to work with a level 19 mage set or a full umbra warrior set. In terms of your stats, I highly advise you to have a minimum of 5000 HP and the rest goes into defense. Naturally, this means having a higher player level will significantly improve your odds against this boss. Go with full spell power for mages and at least 60 accuracy for warriors. Now moving into your battle preparation, it is quite important to bring a few things. First, you want to have flasks of life together with vitality potions for bigger healing. Without these, you will certainly die. You also want to bring magic potions for more damage, defense potions for more dodging, and cursed relics to reduce the incoming damage you will receive from all sources of this fight by 50%. And this is crucial. Also, bring a lot of and keys from nearby Anubis and Elite Anubis and keep your inventory relatively empty because the mummy clutters you up very quickly. Alright, before we take a look at the full run itself, it's super important to break down the fight. Please note that I will be discussing this assuming you have cursed relics equipped to mitigate 50% of the damage you will receive. So we start off with the 4 cursed totems in the arena. These emit purple balls that fire at the mummy to heal him for a significant amount of health. It is impossible to outpace the healing so it is pertinent that you destroy all 4 of these as quickly as possible. Note that they respawn after 90 seconds so it is also extremely important that you finish the mummy off before this happens. Upon death, portal guys will be released and with more totems killed, more portal guys will be released. And this leads me to the next boss mechanic. Now the mummy also often summons portal guys and just like the totem deaths, the more totems killed leads to more portal guys being summoned at once. These portal guys are highly dangerous and will quickly overwhelm you. It is highly recommended to dispatch them as soon as they spawn. Now the third boss mechanic is cursed pools. These pools spread over a large area around a single player and bubble for a few seconds before popping, dealing 2000 damage at once and inflicting curse on the player. This curse effect triggers for an initial nope. 1000 damage and stacks by 20 nope. damage each second and this damage can nope. progressively inflate to larger amounts unless you get cursed again which resets the entire stack back to 1000 damage. Now the fourth boss mechanic is one that I do not quite understand myself so every once in a while you will receive a curse seemingly randomly. I assume the totems are doing this but I'm not super sure either but this is great news because it also resets the curse damage that you received back to 1000. Happy days! Now unlike Nidorex video up above, I must break down this fight entirely so let's start with a typical mage solo fight. Ensure you have your defense, magic, and vitality potions active, then walk up to the golden sarcophagus and insert an ankh key. This starts the fight. The four cursed totems will spawn with the mummy and you should start dispatching them immediately. However, try to ensure that you position yourself such that the mummy is always standing on top of the totem. This way, any portal guy summoned by the mummy will be killed almost instantly by your AoE, reducing the burden on your healing. The mummy may also summon cursed pools, but I would recommend you ignore those for the time being and focus on healing and killing the totems instead. Rinse and repeat for all the four totems and then start running. Now as explained in the boss mechanics portion, the mummy now summons plenty of portal guys to chase you around and this is extremely deadly and this is also where your defense comes in. Having high defensive stats carry the bulk of your survival RNG in this case. So make sure to always keep your distance as much as possible because the mummy and the portal guys moves extremely fast. So run in circles and just spam shooting and healing during this phase. However, unlike the totem phase, we will now try to avoid getting hit by the cursed pools entirely because back when the totems were still alive, you will not get hit by many portal guys. But now things 
things are different and you should minimize all damage you receive as much as possible or else you will be destroyed. So just keep up the running and avoiding the curse pools and that's about it. So that was the solo fight but now for a team fight the run will generally be the same but obviously it will be quicker and safer so that's the advantage over there. However the downside is you might not work well together with that other player or other players and furthermore the drops will also be split according to your damage dealt to the mummy. So whoever did more damage would have a higher chance of getting more loot. Now if you do not position yourselves well during the totem phase you may not be able to cull the portal guys effectively resulting in an inability to control the portal guys population early on. This will be a bigger problem if you split up while running around because the portal guys may disperse and make it extremely difficult for you to kill them at once. This also distracts the players from hitting the boss which could slow down the fight. So always make sure that you are in sync with each other and always move together. Also try to party out with players of equal power so the drops are split more fairly. If you can manage these then this fight will be pretty fun and rewarding. So just practice, practice, watch this video again and practice just to be sure. Now with all that said, let's take a look at a typical run. Ah, before I forget, after killing the mummy, the boss sometimes goes dormant and may reawaken after 2 minutes as a reanimated soul. This is a simple side boss that appears east of the Shadow Dune spawn. It only has one attack where it places the circle on the ground. After 2 seconds, the circle expires, dealing 70% of your max HP in damage at that one location. So just ensure you don't stay in the circle and you will be fine. So the reanimated soul spots 300,000 HP, but killing a reanimated soul awards all participants a random XP potion, which increases your combat EXP for a few minutes, which is very useless and generally a waste of time. So there you go, that's it for the mummy run. Hopefully this video helped you out in any way. If you did, don't forget to a thumbs up, it really helps the channel and subscribe for more Curse of Arrows content. Now with that said, this has been Dare Free to Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.